so nice to hear um, the reference to Joseph Schumpeter there. I'll, I'll uh, embroider Mark's story slightly. When uh, <clears throat> Eastman Kodak went bankrupt in 2012, they were worth minus one billion dollars. And in the same year, Instagram was sold to Facebook with 13 employees for one billion dollars, exactly. <laughs> so I'll leave that trouble up to you, but that does actually underscore a point of mine, which is that there is a certain need for uh, noticing emerging trends and having a grip on uh, what is actually going on in the world and the opinions and the trends and behaviors of people out there because it does impinge upon your lives in various ways. So the uh, presentation uh, title, not chosen by me, is Digging for Data, of Opportunities and Challenges in an Open Research Landscape. Not only does it attempt to use every single word of the dictionary, it is actually as long as the presentation itself. So um, I'll give you an idea of what we are, who, uh, who we are, what we do, and how it might actually be useful for people. Um, we use this term altmetrics quite a lot, and for anybody who doesn't know what it is, uh, I'll define it very quickly. Alternative metrics for measuring research impact are essentially metrics that don't want to replace things like citations and impact factor and all that stuff that academia talks about, but it does augment it, it does add extra metrics to it that complement, we think, the way that research impacts in the world. And of course, with research being more and more open and with all of you opening your doors and producing wonderful partnerships, uh, the, the very next thing that happens is that the, uh, the general public gets involved with your work and read it and is going to be uh, having an effect on it. So that's the first step. Uh, we take this data from non-traditional sources, news, blogs, social media, policy, which some of you even write, uh, Wikipedia videos and so, f so forth and put that all together. And it gives you more of a picture of the engagement. It gives you a larger comprehensive overview of what's going on. So that's, when I say all metrics, that's what I mean by it. Who we are, we're a 17 person company, which means we are four people bigger than Instagram. We're not worth a billion dollars, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but we, are, we call ourselves a data science company. Our product is an understanding of the data, not just the data itself. And we track attention to research outputs at individual article level and produce very nice, we think, very beautiful, uh, very engaging visual tools to help you understand that. And we've been digging for data, actually since 2012, um, I'll give you an idea of uh, what we look for and what we've found. So from the get-go, to begin with, uh, no matter who is our customer or where the data comes from, we look for all of these things online. Every identifier, uh, whether it's a DOI, a handle, a PubMed ID, something from archive, perhaps if you're in the physical uh, or physics-related sciences. Uh, REPEC, if you're like the German National Library of Economics, uh, you'll be adding that kind of data as well. If there's one of these, we look for where it's been mentioned. That's how we begin. And where do we look? Uh, this is an old slide, as in three days old. Uh, it's actually out of date already. We now track over 80,000 different news sites online. That's everything from the BBC all the way down to the Yorkshire Post. Uh, via the Miami Herald and a few other bits and bobs as well to see where these kinds of items are perhaps uh, receiving traction in the news. Um, we curate that manually to some extent. We do actually use a, an aggregator for the 80,000 items now. Um, and we do that not just by looking for the identifiers but also by text mining them as well, by um, human references uh, where the author has been uh, named, where the title has been named, where perhaps they've linked to the original work on, let's say, Elsevier or Springer or whatever it is. Um, not just news, of course, we also search 8,000 academic blogs, not just everything from WordPress uh, or Blogger, but the, the, the blogs that are actually maintained by perhaps people in this room and academia in general that sit outside of particular journals. Uh, they don't sit out, uh, they sit outside of uh, news, but they do have a space online where they're discussing not just their work, but other people's work as well, sometimes in combination. Um, and we augment that with a few other sources as well. By far the most important, I would think, uh, is uh, the pub peer and pub lons community. The community where research data is questioned, sometimes um, uh, praised, but very often called into question. It happened just two days ago. John Bohannon, or uh, Johannes Bohannon as he's calling himself now, published an article saying that uh, chocolate helps you lose weight. And he got it published. And he faked the data and did it deliberately uh, to show you how uh, sometimes peer review can be a very dangerous process. If you are behind an institution that has such a story, you would want to know about it perhaps as soon as possible and where it's being discussed and what kind of damage is being caused, perhaps they can uh, uh, sort of react to it. 
We search other things as well, like Mendeley, which has already come up uh, briefly yesterday as well. Um, to, to give you an idea of not just what's being said, but who's saying it, or, or what level of uh, study those people are at. Social media, the thing that makes everybody knee-jerk away, and yet you are pro-open access. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, all of these sort of references attract by us as well. And other more um, hard-to-describe outlets like Reddit, which is halfway between a social medium, a forum, and uh, perhaps a sort of a science specialist area as well sometimes, depending on which uh, um, area it is. Um, YouTube. Faculty of a thousand for those of you in medicine, and so other stuff as well. Uh, an interesting one is policy documents as well. Uh, we track now tens of thousands of PDFs that reference the work of researchers around the world, of course, for making the case uh, to governments for new kinds of policy. That arguably is probably the most impactful your research will ever be, and yet it's the hardest thing to track because, for a start, nobody outside of government's going to read this stuff. It's extremely uh, dense, very, very hard. It's open, I mean, it can be read, but it's very dry, it's very technical, but it's hugely impactful. Uh, and so we mine this stuff as well from around the world to sort of aggregate this together. And so far, since we've been looking since 2012, we've found something like 44,000 online mentions of research every single day. It's about one mention every two and a half seconds across the various media that we track. Uh, in, in totem, if you're going to take that as a daily um, uh, individual average, sorry, a weekly one, uh, you'd see about 50,000 unique articles being shared online every week. And actually now, as of I checked the numbers yesterday, it's 3.8 million articles we have found for which there is some kind of attention online. I have to ask you the question, are you listening to this stuff? It's very, very important. We have open access mandates, which I fear are sort of being pushed rather to alleviate funding stress rather than the ideological benefits, which would be that everybody is now reading this stuff. And yet I've found that it's actually quite hard to make the case sometimes, especially to more established institutions, that this stuff is actually quite serious, that you should be taking the public as well as other researchers into account. So that's really where we come from. That's really the job that we've been doing. And here's what it looks like. That's what it looks like on an article level. I'll explain it very, very quickly. You can see we tab it up there. There's a summary. Uh, we're on the news tab at the moment, aggregating all that news together, showing you what's being said, linking through to the places where those things have been said online. We do the same for social media, policy, or Wikipedia. We downloaded all of Wikipedia, 50 terabytes, just to, just to, to go through and find out all the references online. Because uh, that's important as well. If somebody does a, uh, a search for the universe is a hologram, the very first result they get is from Wikipedia, which cites the item from Nature that says that, yes, now indeed it does appear that we are all holographic in that sense. And we put that together. We do give it a score. I'll describe how that works in just a second. But we have that colourful donut as well, which is um, qualified by which source uh, your items are appearing in. If it were only appearing in policy, all of that would be purple for example, or if it was only ever appearing in Wikipedia, had never been shared anywhere else, it would be grey. Here you can see very quickly, without having to look at all the tabs manually, that this has actually achieved distributed research across everything that we track. It's, there's a little bit of everything in there, uh, which gives you an idea that this is really, it's, been, uh, it's gone viral, as the youths of today like to say. Um, and so we, we present that for every single article automatically. Now, in terms of that score, um, the score is, uh, gives you a relative idea of volume, so has it been shared thousands of times, then you're very likely looking at a high score. Has it been shared across impactful avenues like academic uh, blogs or news like the BBC, that would, be, that would bring that score up by a factor as well. Uh, or there's authorship as well, just taking Twitter as an example. If I, Ben McLeish, who likes to share cat videos, mention a piece of research once in my entire profile, I have 500 uh, followers and I don't tweet very often. Uh, then that's obviously worth less than for a professional science communicator like Neil deGrasse Tyson, who has a verified account, millions of followers, regularly tweets about research. He's a known public um, entity. We count that more. And if Taylor and Francis decide to share every single item they've ever published, that actually is worth less. So we also factor that down. Uh, but like you can see there, strong news coverage. I could, I could, if I told you that Dark Blue is Facebook, you can in one second tell me which one of these has achieved a greater attraction on social media as well. So that's sort of how we make that look. And because we track everything, because we look for anything that has an identifier, we can start comparing those things too. If you're a researcher who has to make the case for funding, and I'm going to come back to that, you would want to be able to say something like, my article sits in the following sort of area as compared with other articles from the same journal, or from the same time period, 
or in total compared to the articles that have ever been tracked by altmetric.com, 3.8 million, not bad. It gives you something to be able to make the case for further funding, to give you an institutional benchmarking, and so on. We do do an institutional interface, by the way, uh, because it's all very nice and good doing it by article, but it's much more interesting if you can say, here are your departments, and here's how many authors are in those departments, and here are the number of uh, items that they've written or produced, and here are the number that have actually achieved some kind of traction online. Uh, or here is a view of just this particular author and their trends over time and all the rest of it. So you can see there, uh, it's actually quite uh, difficult to see online. I don't know if you can see it there. We, we chart the mentions over time. We actually show you the Twitter demographics as well. We give you the different buckets so you can see, ah, you know, how are we doing in the news? Where is it mostly coming from? Where are my top articles for news, for example, or for social media <coughs> or for policy as well? Uh, so that people who are in charge of, for example, Nicholas Copernicus University, can answer the question, how have we done? Have we appeared in policy? Which ones? Can we uh, get a list of those? And so on. So practically then, what's being said about your research right now? Do you know how to find that out? Um, is your institution or your work as an, uh, as an individual making the news? Uh, if so, what are you going to do? Are you Are going to search yourself on Google? That doesn't look good in the search history, especially on a shared computer, I know. Um, 50,000 searches for Ben McLeish. What is I, do I even do any work anymore? No. Um, has your institution or uh, has your uh, output influenced government policy? I apologise for the poor grammar. I promise you it is mine. Um, ha has my uh, work appeared in those places? How is the public engaging with your work? Um, is, is the latest study uh, on how uh, GM crops are going to give everybody cancer causing problems? Is it going to give you and your institution an issue when it comes to sort of PR or marketing and communications? And do you know how to find that out as well? And is anybody getting it wrong? My favourite cartoon. Someone is wrong on the internet. I'm not going to go to bed until they've been corrected. This kind of stuff is important as well. Um, and so that's what we do with this data. We allow it to be actionable for individual researchers, for departments or groups, so that you can create uh, alerts, so that you can uh, see by subject area what's really going on. You can even customise. You can just get a bunch of identifiers of your own, paste them into our database and see what's been said about them. So uh, you can sort of do that stuff as well. And we give you a stream of that in, in real time. I tested this a couple of weeks ago by sharing an article. And I was within the data in two minutes. There was my profile. It has to be a public profile, by the way. Uh, private profiles don't come from uh, the providers. Um, although Facebook apparently loves to track your location. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen that uh, story about Facebook Messenger and how you can essentially use it to stalk people. Um, but yeah, we do that stuff as well. Um, setting up alerts so that you would know within one day, has my work been cited on Wikipedia? I'd better go and have a look to make sure that they're citing it correctly. Um, and it allows you to then demonstrate in, in sort of benchmarking ways uh, the value of the, the research that's been done. So in other words, the answer is, has anybody been talking about you? Yes, uh, you can get that data in one place. Uh, you can see that when it comes to policy. You can get a sense of what people are saying um, on social media, on platforms, on forums. And you can go and perhaps if you're in the PR or communications team, you can actually reach out to individual researchers uh, from our interface using Twitter. You can go and sort of uh, make a statement uh, if you're in uh, a, a sort of that kind of job. Um, I'm going to skip some of these because I realize I have a lot of this uh, stuff already covered. Excuse me. This is what happens when you are too eager to talk, which, as you can tell, is what I love to do. Um, just a point there that we do link to the full text, not just of news items, but for policy as well. We do mine those in that way. Uh, and it gives you some idea as well um, that we do actually have uh, different tabs uh, for individual social media as well. We don't just put them all together. And there you would see, for example, how you would reach out to uh, researchers who are getting things wrong. That one happens to be about the eradication of all mosquitoes, which I'm a big fan of. So what? Who cares? Uh, well, you should. Um, not only does the Horizon 2020 project, which what, is in charge of something like 80 billion euros, now demand as a third of its score impact? It takes about two years to get a citation sometimes. It takes about three months to get it into Web of Science. Do you have that time? 
Is that going to be enough time for you to make the case that your funding has had a broader impact? In fact, if you are counting citations, are you not only counting academic impact? So uh, the KNAW, what, a, a representative of which was here yesterday, I think he might be here today. I'm sorry, I can't see you right now. I did see you walk past me before. Um, they ask uh, of their standard evaluation protocol, which is now in place until 2020 for the Netherlands, that they need to see, they need to confirm the quality and the relevance of the research to society. You can only do that if you have monitoring in place. Um, they're not alone either, uh, and I won't quote the Horizon 2020 people themselves, but we have the, the REF in the UK, the Research Excellence Framework, that particularly and specifically reference broader impacts needed, and uh, the National Science Foundation in the States also asks for broadening dissemination to enhance scientific and technological understanding. In other words, it's your bread and butter. Uh, it's part of the demands now of research is that it is not just relevant, but actually made available, which is a sort of an extension of open access. Um, and this is now sort of out the door of Europe. Um, uh, it's not quite in every country yet, but that's really ultimately the value we try and uh, provide is to help institutions, to help researchers, to help even countries make the case that uh, their work is indeed relevant. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Ben. Uh, I think we have time for one question. Sure, we have a very eager one right now. Okay, <laughs> so here it is. I'll be around later as well for the rest, sure. Thanks, thanks Ben, for a very interesting uh, presentation. I have two quick questions. Uh, first of all, I heard that a few days ago you already signed agreement with Taylor and Francis, yes. the publisher. So are you planning to sign another agreement with other publishers? So that's my first question. And the second, uh, I already during my uh, trainings with academic staff, I tried to introduce the idea of unmetric button. Uh, but what I heard, they are very reserved about that because um, I had that experience, they don't really use Twitter and don't really use uh, Facebook, so they asked me for what? So did you have any difficulties, uh, difficulties uh, at the beginning uh, of introducing the uh, uh, metrics? Okay, yeah, those are both really good questions. We are by now the golden standard for publishers, by the way, because we do track everything, we can just uh, provide our service as is to publishers. Uh, yes, Elsevier, Springer, Wiley, Taylor and Francis, the Royal Society, uh, the Frontiers people, the guys who just fired 31 editors. Um, there's about 20 uh, publishers so far. We do have a list that I can send you that um, embed our badges per article on their site so that you can link users straight on to the, the discovery, the discussions on, on online. The second one about, uh, yes, we do have a bookmark, it's a free bookmark that you can drag into your browser and any time you're on an article, even if it's from a publisher that doesn't use us as a, as a service, you can just query our database in the background, it drops down with a badge and you can link through to the free version of our, of our badges, yes. Um, some researchers do indeed not use Twitter or Facebook, uh, much to their own uh, uh, sort of frustration, I think, because even though they don't, others do, and they discuss their research. So even if they're not on them, um, their research often is, at least uh, a little bit. Um, and so it, it, there is a bit of a sea change that has to take place, yes. Research is still, unfortunately, as I keep saying, in the ivory tower, is self-referring, doesn't tend to engage the public, doesn't care when the public does engage with them. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's a real problem. It does take some, some doing. But we've seen a real uh, change in, I would say, probably the last year since we started the institutional product back in August. Uh, there's been an attitude change, and there are trailblazers, there are people who are just amazing uh, who do it that I think help other researchers. And actually, as our product, we've got about 26 institutional clients now, as that gets put in, we've heard feedback, often on Twitter, uh, from researchers saying, hey, I discovered other people on the same network that have been discussing the same kinds of data as mine, or have actually been referring to my work, we're now working together, so it's sort of, it, it's sort of, it's like a snowball effect eventually, so yeah, it, it is changing, so keep going. For you. Keep the good fight up. Um, and for anybody else um, who has questions, I'll be around uh, during lunch. I'm very aware I'm standing between you and the next presentation and lunch. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do your blood sugars a favour and stop now, but I'll be outside. Thank you. Thank you very much.